Good morning. I am Peggy, the Interim Executive Director of the Human Services Alliance, and I appreciate your participation this morning. We are going to be doing a quick training of the expanded qualifications and how to enter that information in your individual reports uh, into Foundant um, qualifying for the ARPA award funding. And I say we, um, but actually after I stop talking here in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our compliance staff. And so you, well, I'm going like this because on my screen on either side of me, I have Tashbia and Wynn. And so certainly you guys are welcome to reach out to them if you have any questions. They're the ones that are going to be looking over compliance information and you'll be getting emails from them if they have any questions about what you've submitted. So please feel free to reach out to any of us whenever you have any questions. With that, I believe Tashbia is doing our training this morning and so I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Peggy. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, without any further ado, I would like to share my screen um, with everyone who's here. Um, I know, um, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but A.B. Bay. Um, my name is Abiba Abaki. <laughs> Abiba, thank you so much. Um, I know you're from um, NVFS because um, I just added you yesterday. I don't know if you have been able to activate your account with password. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot able to activate it. I insert my uh, username and then click the forget password and then they said sent me an email for reset new password but I didn't receive any email from oh. uh, yeah I okay. tried several times but it's not work okay I will try to check um the email address Marvin sent me and then we'll see I mean after the meeting I will try to connect with you um okay. but I'm gonna share my screen Can everyone see? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, how do I hide this thing one second? All right. So this is um, the found end page where we kind of we log in. Um, but if you guys don't mind, um, I would like to borrow someone's profile to just show you how applicants see it from their side. Um, is it okay if I borrow NVFS? Can I, can, I, can I use some of you like to proxy um, as someone? Of course. Okay, thank you. Um, because when I'm showing you, it's from my side, it's not going to be the same as you see it. Um, so I, I will just proxy as um, someone from your organization. Um, as you know, we know that Marvin usually takes care of, you know, all the applications. So I'll just try to proxy as him. Um, it's just to show you how that page looks like from your part. So this is your home page where you log in. And when you see the apply button here, that's the initial place to go. And then it's gonna ask you for the access code, which is this, all capital HSA ARPA. And once you enter that code, um, it's gonna give you this individual expenditure report, new. So this is the new, uh, when it says new, this is the like updated version of our individual report. So you hit apply and it will, take you here. Um, so it's kind of looked different than it was before because when you like first come to this page, you see this portion here, which says usable resources um, right here. So what it does is all the forms that are needed for your application, um, they are gonna be here, so suppose your checklist, the one that we are kind of gonna explain now, it's right here. And then we have a new program that just has started. 
uh, which is for rent assistance right here. So you will see this checklist here, but if you're not working with rent assistance, you don't necessarily have to use this thing. Um, these are for the people who are doing that program. But obviously, if you know someone that needs rent assistance, we have our partners that are going to be working on that. So you can definitely refer people to those organizations. The information is going to be found on our website as well. Um, and then we have our updated COVID-19 and the self-income declaration form, uh, both in English and Spanish. So if you hit them, because sometimes it's kind of like they get lost or like, you know, you don't really know where to get this from. So we have them right here. And then we have our um, updated income threshold chart where you can, you know, see who are eligible for services. And then we have our PW uh, County uh, zip code verify page. After that, we have our, our staffing report checklist. Whoever is, whichever partner are doing staffing, they can actually go into this document and this kind of explain everything that how you have to report your staffing. Um, and then we have our uh, previous um, videos that was recorded back in June 2022 um, about the training uh, on, you know, for Foundant. And the last thing is the disbursement link request link. Um, so this is the link where you actually request for any disbursement. Um, this was kind of that people had to ask us to give it to them, but it's right here now and you can use it anytime you want to. So that's that, that's the initial part of our application. And then it's the usual thing where you have to um, name your organization. So since I'm doing NVFS, I'll just write their name and then it asks you whoever is doing it. So suppose it's Marvin who's completing the application. And when it says report identifier, it means that whatever name you want to give the report to, you can. Um, I will just say uh, benefit navigation for client 001. Um, I'm not using their name. Um, some people like to use names, some people don't. So it's just really up to you. And then we have all these uh, different expenditure types. Uh, these are like the different uh, service categories we have. Um, so mostly everything is the same. Um, as you have been doing it in the past like eight months or so, but there are like little things that have changed with that expanded checklist. So the first thing I would like to do is suppose you are doing benefit navigation. Um, this is the first um, service category we have. So when you click that, it will give you the new client question. So if it's a first time client, obviously you are gonna say yes. And then if it's like a person that is coming back and they have gotten services before, you would say no. And when you say no, it actually doesn't really ask you so many questions because whatever in information you have used for them in the past, you're just gonna write that down here and that's it. Um, and then we have this option for not applicable. So that's for application where, um, this is not related to a client directly. Um, this is like, could be something like an additional cost you had to do, could be like for media, marketing, you know, all those sort of uh, expenditures. We did not have this before, but now we do. If you have any um, extra expenses related to your grant project, you can definitely put those here. Um, and it has to be related to benefit navigation um, and support assistance. So suppose you were doing some marketing and you have to put that cost somewhere. You are gonna do that right here when it's a new client, you are gonna say NA because it's not a, about a particular client. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna write there um, the expense. Suppose you have spent a thousand dollar for that marketing. So you're going to put that value here and it's going to ask you to upload a file, which could be that invoice, like a receipt or, you know, any related documentation that's going to prove um, that particular um, expense. So that's that. Um, this is a new thing you're going to see, but I mean, hopefully it's going to be helpful for a lot of us. Um, but when you say new client, um, I just want to run through that. 
you will see this new eligibility section. Um, it definitely wasn't here before. This is that expanded uh, list. So now we have actually expanded this three broader criterias when on the first one, it says they have to be a Prince William resident currently residing in a high food insecurity zip code. Um, and then the second part talks about a client who is 55 years or older, who is a Prince William resident. And the third portion is actually the same as we have been working for the past eight months, which is the Prince William resident. They're not in high food insecurity zip code, but they have somewhere, they have been affected by COVID and they can prove that um, with that COVID and financial impact report. So this, this part is gonna be exactly the same as you have been doing it, but the first two um, criterias are gonna need like a different kind you know, of documentation process, uh, which is if I say Prince William resident in high food insecurity zip code, they actually give you when you are coming here, client zip code, it's gonna give you a drop down list of zip codes. So all these zip code listed down here are the high food insecure zip code areas. So anyone residing here can apply for ARPA grant services. They don't have to prove anything else. They just have to live within the zip code areas. But here's a thing what on the notes section you see, if your client resides in 20110 and 20111. These two zip codes actually fall both in Prince William County and Manassas City or Manassas Park City. So they kind of share that location. Um, so if you find a client who is actually residing in any of this zip code, you have to prove that this person is actually a Prince William County resident. They're not from Manassas um, City or Manassas Park. Um, so to do that, I'll show you if you select 20110 and then it's going to ask you obviously for the name of the client or if you're using a um, unique identifier like I did, client 001, hopefully. yeah, client 001 and it asks you about their household, I would say just four and a number of ch children, I would say two. And um, for the senior, I would just say zero. There is no senior in that household. And then you are gonna put that address here. I'm just gonna use our office address because that's all I remember. Um, 90701 Center Street and city is Manassas. And zip code is 20110. So when you put that, you, you see that this little thing right here, which says PWC checker. This is the link where you have to click and it will take you here in like this another page and you're just gonna say accept here and it will bring you on this map page. And where you see this little binocular thing, you're gonna and like, click here and it says premise address. So what you have to do is you have to just put that address here. Uh, be careful when you put it in because if you put like even one digit wrong, it will kind of give you the wrong um, result. So the street number was 907, 9071 and then street name was um, Center Street. And street type is street, sorry. So there is no unit and you're just gonna simply submit this. Asia, before you hit submit, take out the ST on the street name. Okay because it won't show up if you type in the street style inside the street name. Okay, thank you so much. All right. You're okay. okay. So I took that out and then, well, 
that was a good note <laughs> for everyone, I think. Um, so when you hit submit, it will say no results available on this side because this address is not, it does not belong to Prince William County. It is probably in the Manassas Park or Manassas City part. So that's why it's not gonna come up here. So any address that you are trying to put in here, if it, it's not in Prince William County, it's not gonna come up here. Um, I don't really know an address where I can show you that it's gonna pop up here. So, um, you know, but definitely when you see something like this and when you have like, when it's in Prince William County, it's gonna show you the result right here that, oh, our records match with this address. So you will know that, hey, this is in Prince William County and we this person is good to go. Uh, Fra uh, Francia is going to type in the address in the chat because we uh, they need to see what it looks like when it is a good address. Okay. Yes, go ahead and type sure. it, and yes. then we'll put it in the system. Okay, so it says 201 second. These things are bothering me. Um, it says two... Six two six two six zero six. It just got corrected. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Two six zero six, and the street is H E T H Court. Uh, I think I have to put it here, right? Court. Yes. And submit. Submit. So right here, because it's literally showing you where the address is, um, even though this zip code is not 20110 or 20111, we only have to do this checker if the zip codes are 20110 and 20111. Those two zip codes need this verification because they kind of share their location within the Prince William County and Manassas Park and Manassas City. Uh, but as you see that one record located here, it came up. So anything that's in Prince William County will show up here. But if it's not in Prince William, it's not gonna even come up. Um, what, so what you have to do is take, if it come, pops up here, um, simply just take a screenshot of this page. And once you go back to the application, it says upload a file right here. And uh, you have up until like um, five megabyte of cap, uh, like- um, For your uh, cap. Yeah. yeah. So- uh, Tatia, I'm going to send you a, 20110 address. I got confirmation to be able to use this in this particular training. Okay. Um, it should be a Prince William address and not a Manassas city. Okay. Okay. Did he send it? Yeah, I sent it in the chat. Okay. So that's actually better. So this one is. Six nine three three three, and it's Colchester Park is part of the name. Colchester Park, and then it's a drive. Yeah, it's a drive, and then submit. Oh, it's just oh, it's a one one two. He told me it was a one one zero. Um. Well, however, if it's a two zero one one zero. And if it's in Prince William County, it's gonna show up right here, like yes. in the side. And it will also show you the map exactly. So that way we know that, hey, this is a Prince William County address. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't wanna take too much time on this. If you guys have any question when you're filling it, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we will try to take a look. Um, but, and then, yeah, as I was saying, when you take a picture, please upload that picture right here just to show that this address falls under Prince William County. Um, after that, it's the usual question we used to have before their race, I would just say Asian and then disability, I would just say no. 
uh, military no. Um, and COVID-19 impact is gonna be still here, even though um, you don't have to prove maybe their COVID impact because they are already falling under those zip code areas. So we don't need their COVID impact documentation, but it's still here. Um, just for us to know that they were impacted. So it could be their loss of income or like reduced income, like whatever their situation was, just list them here. You don't have to necessarily prove that. For their ethnicity, um, I would just there say- There will be questions say, at the end of the presentation. So you can ask, if you have any questions, you can ask them after. Yes, definitely. Um, and when it comes here, um, you still see that qualified census tract, which is the QCT map we were using. But as you see on the headline, it says only through December 2022, means that whoever is still submitting paperwork for before January of 2023, they will still able, like they will still use this. QCT question, but anyone from January 2023, we are not using this QCT anymore because this is not a criteria anymore. This is only for people who are working on their backlog. Um, so you can simply just ignore this question and especially it's not a required question because it doesn't have that asterisk. So you can simply just skip through this question. Um, when it asks you supporting documentation of COVID-19 impact, there is this information submission link. So if your person lives in those high put insecure zip code, as we have chosen for this report particularly, um, I'm sure there's, um, when, correct me if I'm wrong, um, there's nothing to really submit here, or they're still going to submit something. Um, it depends on... Unless you hit the COVID documentation, you don't need the information submission link. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So since your person is already residing in those high food insecure zip code, I mean, we don't really need any further documentation to prove their COVID impact, as I have mentioned earlier. So you don't necessarily have to use like this link to submit any further document. But if they if you say that, hey, this person is not in the high food insecure zip code, but they're still in Prince William County and have been affected, then yes, definitely we are going to still use that COVID-19 and the income uh, verification form. Um, and after that, it just asks you, um, did you submit all information required using the information submission link? Um, um, it says you should have submitted COVID-19. So if if you are not using that submission link, you can just say no because you haven't really submitted anything. Um, but if you have submitted something, then you usually use um, submission reference number. So if you say yes, then you are gonna just put that number here. But for this application, we are not using any documentation because of that high food insecure zip code. So we are not gonna do any further submission link here. So you just say no and simply just push put the submit button submit submit application button um so that's the part from where we are following that first question of that high food insecure zip code so if you're doing client is 55 years or older and is a prince william resident this after right there this question pops up for our client age verification it asks you, please type in birth, birth day of your client. Um, so you're gonna just simply put their date of birth. Um, I'll just say, so this is, suppose this is their date of birth. So you're gonna just put it here, January 1st, 1958. Uh, because remember it, it has to be 55 years and older. So the person has to be, um, within that age range. And then it's going to ask you simply that, you know, you got in fair or the client's name, which I have used here. And what does it say? But must fill within the note. Why does it say that? 
Do you not need the slashes? Mm. No, you don't need the slashes. So you don't need the slashes? You do not need the slashes. I just put the slashes there so that way they know which part to put first. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank we'll, you. We'll fix it. We'll fix the uh, way it shows. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that. Um, I will just keep the other information same. Um, household member is four, and there is two children, and no senior in the household. And you know, um, if you're, um, and then you put their address. So four fifty five and older. Um, If that person is still in those zip code, then yes, we still need this PWC checker. If they are not, if it's like, suppose it's like something else. Um, let me see, um, 20112. So we don't have to do that PWC checker because this, this zip code does not require to check us that it's only for this two zip code so that's why you don't really have to upload anything here and for race you're just going to select all these options right here and where it says that information submission link what we need is that person's id showing their birth date um, and on that expanded checklist we have those list of what kind of document we can accept so any photo ID that shows their birthday will be acceptable. Um, this is the checklist. So I just wanna show you that it says photo ID providing date of birth. So, you know, it can be anything that's gonna be acceptable with their photo and their birthday showing. So you are gonna, you upload that because it has it is like a HIPAA document. So you're gonna use this information submission link and it will take you right up here. And you'll just simply say what you're doing, your organization name, what you are trying to do here. And you are gonna put that unique identifier number. You know, I know you have been doing this for so long. So hopefully you know what to do. And um, then, you know, you're gonna put that reference number and submit that. Um, after that, again, this QCT pops up right here, but then again, you are not gonna use it because you don't really need it from January of 2023. And since you have submitted that ID, you are gonna say yes, and then just put your reference number right here and submit the application. Other than that, if you do say this third portion, which has that COVID and financial impact, it will simply, be the same as it was before this same exact documentation where you are going to use we have this lovely reference here where you see that updated COVID-19 impact form and then income self-declaration form if you don't have their income verification in any other way you can do the self-declaration form and just submit them through that information um, where is that right here sorry um this information submission link you're just going to submit everything up here um with any other service category other than benefit navigation like up until emergency shelter employment support child care and utility it's going to be the same exact form and however i showed depending on this three broader criteria that we have we have to focus right now so everything else will be the same um i just demonstrated one service category because you know everything reflects the same information um so suppose for emergency shelter it will ask you where this person from so if you say they're residing in that high food insecure zip code it will be the same exact process where you have to put that um zip code area here from this drop down menu. Um, and these are the 10 new zip codes we have. And also, when you are coming up down here, it's going to ask you for that emergency shelter. What, how much have you paid for that person? So it's 
the, you are just going to put the value here. Suppose they have been living in a hotel or somewhere and you have paid 2000 for their stay and you're just going to simply upload their like the receipt and whatever shows um, on the invoice. Um, you're just going to submit that. Um, other than that, I don't know if I have missed anything else. Win can help me, um, but this this is simply um, the changes we have. Uh, again, just to keep in mind about this three client eligibilities now because it has a little bit change. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Uh, I have the form open. Um, yeah, so I see if, uh, Fr Francia, you had maybe some question. I can take that. No, it was regarding the QCT, but since you're not using it anymore, uh, then I guess that's good. Angelica, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I was going to ask. So then uh, I'm, I'm reading up on the uh, qualification checklist. So if a client lives, most of the clients that we deal with live within Dumfries, Triangle, and Quantico and Woodbridge. So if they fall, if they live in the 22172 um zip code then that means they're eligible for assistance since they're no longer using the qct map yes you so, said okay. Okay. yes even though you're not using a qct map anymore uh -huh. the reason why is because qcts reside in those high food insecurity zip codes okay and so we're going based off the food insecurity rather than the qct and because he, they that those residents reside there you will not need to provide that covid documentation anymore Okay. Uh, and by COVID documentation, you mean like the, the income verification or do you yes. mean like the actual? Okay. So as long as they live and you see it on the bill, obviously, like if they live in 22172, for example, then I don't need to provide any other further income documentation or anything like that then? No. Okay. All you'll need to do is just check off that COVID impact box, but you will not need to provide the documentation for it. Okay. All right, thank you so much. That was the, the only question. So QCT, we're done with. And then, um, so the only re the only time we'd be sending the picture of the map is if they were in Manassas or like the part of Prince William County that Manassas is, that you showed earlier, that would be the only time we would show the map then? Yes. yes. This okay. is the, yeah. It's only to prove that you're not helping a Manassas city or Manassas Park City resident because okay. they have their own ARPA funds. Um, okay. However, uh, the QCTs do apply to anything that could have been applied to a past reason. After that, you do not have to use them moving forward. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I know it's not, it's if before that's retro, it's not retroactive or it's retroactive, but not moving forward. Um, now once, if once we were to receive the, the next disbursement, we don't have to worry about the QCTs. So it's just, if they're a resident of any of those zip codes, then they don't need to provide any other information. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you so I have much. A, I have another question. We mm -hmm. have many clients that come but their ID doesn't show, they haven't changed the address with the DMV. So it's the same, the name is the person on the ID in the bill, but it's not the same address on the ID. What do we do in those cases? Um, match it, it just, for us is we're just looking for the bill. And if the bill has the address that you are supporting, then that's all we're gonna be do, using. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other question? I don't think so. Um, so before we um, before we close the session, I just wanted to mention a few things um, which we already have. I'm sure we have sent this uh, qualification checklist to all our partners in the past, you know, in like the past week. So, um, but please take a look when you need a reference, please come back here because this is a good resource to look for, you know, um, what we are looking for, what documentation you may need to provide. And it also gives you like a, um, you know, good review of what we're working for. So for like, suppose it says for photo ID, what is that we need? So anything other than, 
you know, if you don't see any information that's included here, we're here and we will try to help you, you know, as you um, get in touch with us. Uh, but before um, I end this session, I just wanted to uh, read this through. These are a few reminders uh, for your submission. Um, so I'm sure, again, you have this, but I just wanted to read them through um, because you know, we just want to make sure we, we're all in the same page and we're not missing anything. So first point talks about review all scanned documents to ensure legibility before loading, loading them into Fondant. Um, suppose you're scanning an invoice, a receipt, or like a bill, and you're trying to load that into the Fondant website. Um, sometimes it happens that, you know, when you're scanning, maybe one part is not really visible. Sometimes it has like a shadow, you know, things might happen. So please, please, it's a request from our team that before you actually load that document, just double check before you do that. Be, you know, just make sure that if you can read it, we'll be able to read it too. So please keep that in mind. Um, and the second part talks about self-declaration forms, COVID or the financial, are to be used only if there's no other supporting documentation, which means that, okay, we are helping a client who may not be able to prove their income, right? So they don't have, they don't get pay stub or something, you know, like some problem on they only get pet. And a lot of our clients are not even authorized to work here. So some sort of difficulty they are facing, we understand. So it's only acceptable that self-declaration form when they have certain situations. Other than that, we really, you know, um, ask everyone that please, please try to get their financial documentation if they don't if, if they're not able to prove anything, then obviously we have this resource available where you can use the self-declaration form. But our first um, choice is to use that, um, their original income form. And then it comes with self-declaration form must be fully filled out. That means is there are certain check boxes on there. They have to be selected properly. If that person is, they had loss of income, they have reduced income, maybe they have like increased mortgage they, or maybe they have like medical expenses maybe increased. Whatever their situation is, please talk to them. And whenever you know what that is, please have them fill out those boxes. After they fill out those boxes, there is a portion of that form which talks about the explanation we really need that explanation because we wanna know how they were affected by COVID. So please um, motivate them to fill that out. Um, they can write whatever happened in like few, like one or two sentences, but we really want to see something filled out there uh, because without just having any note or any backstory, we can't really say that, hey, this person was actually affected. So please have them fill that out. And also please make sure that they're signing that form and the um, representative of the organization, whoever is helping them, they also sign and date the form. That's a very important. And when you're scanning those forms, please, sometimes it happens that the person you are, like the representative signature, kind of not getting scanned. So please make sure that you are actually scanning both of those pages. After that, it says name of assistance requester or person qualifying matches name on assistant documentation or location. That means exactly what Win said that on the bill, when you're maybe helping them with like utility or like an emergency shelter or like employment, you're paying for something, right? So on that bill or invoice, the whoever that person's name is has to match whoever is applying, like the requester, it has to match. If they don't match, we cannot accept those application because we don't know who you are helping. So please, you know, uh, just be, when you're submitting those, please just take a look at that and, you know, just make sure that these are all like correlated. After that point, it comes with the 
PwC ARPA funds cannot serve residents of the cities of Manassas or Manassas Park. Partners must verify those residents of zip code 20110 and 20111 as being in PW County, not the cities, whatever I have actually explained on that PwC checker. It says about the same thing. We are only serving PwC um, residents, not the people in Manassas or Manassas Park. Next part shows talks about the math. Sometimes, you know, it, usually comes from staffing re reports or you know um, maybe you have done some calculation and you know that what you did, but when you're submitting that report, it sometimes gets super hard for us to know how it equals to that number. So please, if you are doing any math, any calculation, you are maybe you know adding something, you're subtracting something, please show us that math. If you don't have really like a map to show, please highlight the numbers we want to see that has added up to the final number. So either you can highlight or give us that math on your form, um, on that invoice. Um, and the last point is when uh, providing documentation showing multiple lines of information like receipts, um, it says receipts, invoices, paychecks, timesheet, please highlight again, um, what, if you are submitting like a page with like 20 number and we only need to see one, please highlight that one number. So it's easy for us to just focus on that number and see, oh yeah, this makes sense. Because uh, when we see too many um, information on one page, we kind of get confused that, oh, where, where is this coming from? So just be a little, you know, um, I would say con cautious about you know what you're submitting um so we don't have to go back and forth within you know our partners um but again if we have questions we'll reach out to you but at least these points that are listed here please try to um you know just yeah peggy thank you sorry to interrupt tashbia and i may be repeating and my understanding i i, I defer to my compliance team because uh, we've talked about this but I had to step away for a phone call, so forgive me. Um, one thing I want to point out is, is the importance of a narrative. Um, these are, are the guidelines and what we're asking for and what's going to help us make sure that we've got all your information and can just you know, mark it complete and keep moving. However, there are times when, uh, like that example, I, I came back just as Tashbi was talking about the bullet where it says, the name of the assistance requester and the person that of the documentation matches all the way through. We do understand that there are times when, for example, you're working with, I know I've changed my name a number of times. So if I was in a situation and I was getting assistance and my documentation had my unmarried name and I had just gotten married and we've moved in and so the bills have my married name, uh, but I didn't bring my marriage certificate, you know, with me, but if you can give us the narrative, you know, they just got married in XYZ, we don't, you know, their, their social, their driver's license hasn't been changed over, explain it to us. If you're doing financial documentation and you're looking at a household, and so the person that's requesting it, they might not have any money, um, but there is some money in the household and you're documenting that, but the names don't change because they're not related, they're just in the household. So it really the bottom line is if, if you understand it and it makes sense to you, but you may not have all the pieces in the paperwork, you just know the story because you were working with that client, just document that story, explain to us what's going on, take a blank sheet of paper and, and type it up or write it down just to connect the dots so we don't have to go back to you and, and ask for that story or find the person that checked that worked with that client. Um, so that's kind of the reason for all of these, the showing the math, the highlight, the lines, give us the narrative, um, explain it. And when you explain it clearly to us, not only will that make it, we're, we're appreciative, easier on us, but it also means that when the auditors come in and they're looking at the paperwork, they don't say, Alliance, why did you accept this? Uh, we can, you, it'll be obvious why we accepted it because the story is all right there. So, thank you. Thank you, Peggy, for adding. Yep, yes, that completely makes sense. Um, 
Yes, if there's any change on their name and location, please. Yeah, and a narrative can help us to go through the whole process. So whenever you know some story, please let us know as well at the same time, because we are also working from the back end and we don't want to be left out. And, you know, at some point, we're like, oh, yeah, we didn't know really what happened. So that's pretty much it. I don't know if you have any further questions. I do have another question. I'm sorry. OK, so when we're looking at the income, you want the total from gross or net? I'm sorry, repeat that again. When we are looking at the income, like the pay staff, do you want us to look at how much they get paid in gross or net? Um, it says right here, gross household. Um, I, I'm trying to highlight, it's not highlighting. Oh. It's not highlighting very well, but we are looking at the gross income. So pre-tax. Yeah, it's, it's not highlighting at all, but it's right here when it says gross household income, 50% area median income. Um, so, it, it says right here, it's the gross. Okay, <laughs> it's not the and then if someone is not working, but they do receive food stamps, and then so we put as the income zero. Uh, so we include the amount of how much they're getting paid, uh, they're getting in food stamps. For food stamp, is that an income win? Um, food stamps technically, so that's a gray area because food stamps are used only for buying food. EBT and stuff like that is only for food purchases and cannot apply to anything else. So it so, so in this case if you're applying it for utility, it shouldn't it, you don't need to count it because it's only for your groceries. Because we do we do have a lot of I'm sorry, thank you. We do have a lot of clients who will call and say. We're not working at this time and you receiving uh, food stamps and we do ask them to be, bring the SNAP benefit letter as part of the documentation. Now, uh, for my understanding is if they live in the food insecurity area, then they don't need any for their documentation. Is that right? If they are in high food insecure zip code, they do not need any further documentation. Yes, you're right. Okay. Yes. And, and I'm just going to add in about the question of the food stamps. Uh, we already, you know, a, a lot of your clients are already going to be qualified because of the zip code, but it never hurts to include, even if we know their income is zero, their income is so low that they're getting the food stamps. But if you are, are gathering that, information more information never hurts and and i believe you know our staff will look at that and if we see additional documentation that shows you know they're they're in the zip code or maybe they're outside the zip code but they need the help that's why they're getting the food stamps so that's supporting information about the qualification so okay. i i have another case like for example we will have a mom who will call the bill is under the mother's name in her id and address but the one who gets the food stamps is their daughter and grandchildren. Since they all live in the same household, do we include that income or do we include that information and then we just do separate a narrative of the situation? Yes, exactly. Because this income level, it, we're looking at the household. So it's all the people that are living within the household. Um, so you'd include that there's some money coming in, but the fact that the person requesting the help is, is not in place, so they make nothing and they're getting the food stamps. So, so include the information and give us a note qualifying there, um, you know, explaining this, this is who's in the household. It's, it's mom and daughter and grandkids, and this person is making some income, but not enough. This is the person requesting to help, you know, so so explaining it just like you're doing here, it makes complete sense to us. Does that, does that work for you? Yes. Now, I have a, one last question. So right now, the last client we saw, it was November 30. We do not have any more. I believe we already used 75000 so we do not have any more money on the account. But I don't think you are up to the files in November. I think when you're until July or something like that. 
So we are not allowed to request any money until you finish in with the files. So forgive me, uh, Francis, who are you with? Uh, we are with St. Francis House, St. Francis of Assisi Church. Right, okay. Um, we are, <laughs> okay, so, we, so we're already in, in communication with, with you guys and with Sam. Um, so I, I certainly don't want to say stop and, and we can talk about it. So I talked to Sam because we just had a conversation recently with him um, because uh, we, we certainly want to be able to work something out and, and get, you know. Have I you think it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation, Peggy, with them. Yeah. You talk All right. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any question? Uh, just to just to make sure I'm 100% clarified. So for income, or we're not asking income or we don't need to provide that unless they don't fall within the other two. Although um, obviously the new three eligibility client um, qualifications that you have are a lot more broad now compared to before with the QCT. So if they're not within the so basically it would only be if they're in that Manassas area essentially because if they fall within Prince William County or the the insecurity areas then I don't need to provide anything else it's only if they live outside of that in insecurity area or not a senior yes okay uh, so they still have to be Prince William County residents though like yes. any yeah any zip code that's falling under Prince William, yes. Okay. Um, no field food insecurity or no like um, 55 and older needs those verification, yes. Okay, perfect, just wanted to confirm. Thank you so no, much. No, of course, yeah. And again, anytime you come up with any question while you are with the client, while you're submitting the reports, please let us know. Um, me and Win, we usually work with the compliance. So please, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Don't let things pile up. Uh, what well, you know, and have like you know, just be too late, because we're always here. And as you go, we want to help you, so we don't have to just you know. After maybe six months, we're like, oh wow, so much has piled up already. So. Um, yeah, anything at any moment, please reach out to us, and we will be you know, trying our best to help you. Um, so with that being said, I will maybe stop recording and sharing my screen.